I know, you're already yelling at me that Holland or De Bruyne are the key to the city side, and they're incredibly important. But give me a chance here. When people think of Guardiola's city, maybe they think of dominance. Maybe they think of the great attacking football. If we're being totally honest, a lot of people probably think of their finances in some capacity. But anyway, when thinking of the football, you'd be hard pressed to find many people who would think of cities holding midfielders through the years. In some ways, that's a bit of a shame considering some of the talent that is played in that position. But I guess when you are playing in the same side as Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, Jack Grealish, Foden, Mahrez, etc, 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 well, the midfield is an afterthought for many of us, even though it's integral to Guardiola and City's success. And even in making this video, I feel like I'm part of the problem. Rodri is someone who deserves so much more credit for his role in the midfield, allowing the other attackers and midfielders to get forward and do their thing. I'll get to you eventually, Rodri, I promise. Obviously, he's a huge fan of the channel. He's definitely heard of this Canadian guy who makes football videos, so he'll certainly feel slighted by this video as he cries into two, potentially three trophies over the summer. So I'm sorry, Rodri. But no, this video isn't for the often overlooked Spanish midfielder, but for John Stones. When he joined from Everton at a young age, there were many who questioned him and whether he had the tactical discipline to thrive under Pep Guardiola. But while he has indeed proven that he can play with the discipline that has been asked of him in the past, Guardiola has taken this 2023 matured Stones and allowed him to indulge on his attacking urges now that he has the discipline and awareness to do so responsibly without sacrificing his defensive duties. The results? A winter of change that has City on the verge of the first English trouble since their City rivals did it over two decades ago. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the channel as we have video number two in this two-part mini-series where we look at players that are either under-celebrated or are integral to the final, even if they may not shine as bright as the players doing all of the attacking for their sides. The previous video, in case you missed it, a look at how Matteo Darmian went from Manchester United reject to playing a key role in interseason as a plucky centre-back. Today though, all about John Stones. Stones first began making a name for himself playing for his local side, Barnsley, before he was snapped up by Everton for just three million pounds to play under David Moyes in 2013. Well, I say just three million, but he was also just 18 at the time, and while that would be quite the steal for Everton, he would cost far more later on for another club, but we're, we're jumping ahead already here. John Stones became a fan favorite at Everton. I mean, a young, highly talented center back that happens to be British. The hype goes on overdrive when you use the B word, the British word, but the hype was justified, so long as everyone agreed that he was a massive, yet unrefined talent. The main complaints surrounding John Stones would be that he was a risky center back. He would have lapses in concentration that would lead to mistakes, like poorly weighted back passes, risky passes through the heart of defense that would get picked off by opponents, trying to dribble out of situations, dribble out of trouble, holding the ball too long instead of clearing it out, etc. Overall, just a bit naive, to put it in one word, which was completely normal given he signed with Everton when he was just 18. There were even moments where in his first full season with Everton, despite his ridiculous talent that was evident to all, Stones would take his turn riding the bench. To be expected, really, when you couple the jump from Barnsley to the Premier League, as well as the mistakes he was making. But that being said, he was still playing quite well and was a mainstay during the 2015-16 season, despite some Everton supporters pointing to Phil Jagielka as the more reliable centre-back, in spite of Stone's ceiling being much higher. In fact, Roy Hodgson, England manager at the time, spoke about how Stones needed to quote, cut out mistakes that cost him his starting place at the end of February and early March of 2016, as they could also cost him his place in the England squad for Euro 2016. Let me reiterate one more time, this was all just a lack of maturity and experience as a top player. He wanted to be more than just a defender who would hoof it out as soon as he had the chance to do so. He wanted to be more involved, and I can't say for sure, but I would assume he wanted to change how English centre-backs had been viewed previously. Even with the mistakes he had in him, Guardiola still identified Stones as a player that he needed at City. Mangala, Otamendi, they weren't cutting it at the time, and so City ponied up 47.5 million pounds in the summer of 2016, a record for an English defender, and a fee that made him the second most expensive defender behind David Luiz at the time. 
His first season at City will have gone similarly in some respects to how he was playing at Everton. Solid, brilliant with a sly tackle, reads the game well, has a variety of passes up his sleeves. Yes, that's sleeves plural. <laughs> All of the best parts of John Stones were on display and his mistakes were seemingly coming on less and less. However, after starting in two consecutive losses against Chelsea and Leicester in November of 2016, against Leicester, he looked especially poor with a back pass being gifted to Jamie Vardy. Guardiola didn't include him in the City squad for two consecutive matches due to this. As you can see here, he returned for two more matches, then was benched for two matches, and would alternate between being a substitute and starting. His place wasn't at all assured until February of that season. The following season, the 2017-18 season, he would play well mostly, but Stones was rocked by injuries, and yes, pun intended, and no, I won't apologize for that groaner, I had to take the opportunity. And as the years would go on, not only did he have injury issues, but some personal issues as well, coupled with the arrival of Aymeric Laporte, he would find that getting more than two consecutive Premier League starts was difficult to come by. It wasn't until the 2020-21 season with Otamendi gone that we would see Stone start to flourish for City alongside Ruben Dias. And this is significant as all of the personal issues off of the pitch paired with the mistakes he was making previously. By the way, he made some mistakes for England as well at the 2018 World Cup, you'll remember, and the 2019 Nations League. All of this was mounting to the point where City were considering giving up on the English defender, but they'll be very glad that they didn't. Of course, those personal issues, I mean, they can't be overlooked when discussing Stone's performances. Remember, footballers are humans too, and Guardiola certainly didn't overlook them, often pointing to these issues when discussing why John Stones was struggling or why he wasn't in the team. And sure enough, as he got through them, he's been a mainstay for City, so long as he's been healthy. And this season, when he hasn't been healthy, Guardiola has been able to call upon both Ake and Akanji to fill in for Stones and do a fantastic job. But with his return, Stones basically gave Guardiola the key to perfect his city's tactics, to find that balance between their mouthwatering attacking play to staying solid defensively and not giving up many goals. League leading best defense alongside Newcastle, by the way. So how has Pep done it? Well, he previously would roll out City in a starting formation of 4-3-3. And while Juan Casello was with the club, he would roll into the midfield to play as a double pivot alongside Rodri when City had possession, essentially creating a box in the middle of the park with the other central midfielders, be it Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, take your pick really of the more advanced central midfielders. This worked well for City. Rico Lewis took to it relatively well also, but if teams would transition quickly enough, the time it took the inverted fullback to get back into the fullback position would sometimes burn them as the center back would be dragged wide thus causing disorganization in defense. But with Cancelo leaving and Stones returning from injury at the beginning of March, this has signaled a change in how Guardiola sets his teams up from the beginning. Rather than starting with a 4-3-3 with the fullbacks playing as inverted midfielders, depending on the side of the pitch the play is on, Guardiola instead plays Manchester City in a 3-2-4-1 with Stones and Rodri as the double pivot when City have possession of the ball. Stones has license to get forward and combine with the likes of De Bruyne, Bernardo. In fact, if you look at City's first goal in the second leg of their match against Real Madrid, there's a great example of what he can offer City going forward. His ability on the ball, the way that he has an eye for attacking space, the way he can play a measured pass, he has all of the qualities of a great central midfielder. Speaking of attacking space, how many times did we see this against Manchester United in the FA Cup final? Here's an image from Ahmed Walid, I've linked to him below, he does great work. But one thing that has to be called out is his positional and tactical awareness, as Rodri isn't one to just sit in front of the back line and try to break up play. He too, like all players in Guardiola's side, will contribute to the attack. And this is when Stones identifies when to stay in front of the back line should they lose possession, because when City shift to defending, that's when Stones shines further. So as we know, just to go over it again, previously the fullback would drift inside and when City would return to defending, either the center back would get dragged out wide or the fullback would be in a foot race to make up for the space on the flank. Now, with Stone's starting position being in the midfield, his starting position is basically perfectly aligned to where the right center back would be in a back four. 
but just a few paces ahead. So he simply has to drop alongside Ruben Dias, pushing to the right center back from the back three into the fullback position to immediately cover the flank. You no longer have that delay between the inverted fullback getting into position or the center back sprinting across to cover the flank. It's there immediately. With the defensive assuredness that this gives Guardiola side, the likes of Gundogan, De Bruyne, etc. aren't shackled by defensive duties. Well, I mean, they still absolutely defend as a team and fall into a 4-5-1 sort of shape when defending deep, but the defensive load is lessened for the players whose best attributes are going forward. The return of Stones and his development into this new role has led to City collecting 12 clean sheets in their previous 22 matches, going all the way back to February 28th. And now they have a chance at winning the treble to become the first English side to do so since Manchester United in 1999. The real treble we're talking about here, Premier League, FA Cup, and the Champions League. Up against Inter Milan, it will be no easy feat, of course, as their tactical organization and Inzaghi's automations for beating the press are very impressive as they have caught form at the business end of the season. But with Stones playing in this new role, he helps to allow City's attackers to do what they do best without sacrificing their defensive solidity. Their chances at making history are pretty high, and Stones' role in said history, if they are to be victorious, of course, can't be understated. I thank you guys for joining me for this one, the final video before we all will take in the Champions League final on June 10th. If you enjoyed this and you're new here, why not subscribe for more content from myself at Rabona TV? Other than that, thanks again for spending your precious time with me and enjoy the football, guys. See you after the final. Yeah.